Thank you. Um, thank you, Philip, for organising this lecture. And thank you, Chi, for spending your hour tonight um, explaining this topic to us and your work. Um, Chi has been working in the art-related industries for 15 years. Yeah. One year as the FPGA engineer, six years as the ARC system integration engineer, the system integration company of national instruments, four years as the ARC specialist in national instruments, Australia, three years as sales directors in the App Vision Australia. Thank you, Chi. Yeah, thank you, Dara. Yeah, thank you for your time com coming to this event. Thanks, like, Philip and Zara and uh, Dom for organizing it. I wish this is like a kind of informal chit chat uh, rather than a lecture. That's why I bring so many different stuff. So some of them are from my company demo, uh, demo Pours. Uh, uh, some of them are from my friends or myself. So I hope this is like a pure uh, knowledge sharing session without any ads. So uh, <laughs> if I, if I talk, talk about any brand, uh, any specific unit, I like it, I don't like it, I'm any talking about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's can be done, that can be done. Okay, let, let's get started. Let's do the before we start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in our world, like uh, everyone, is, everything is tested. Like our phone needs to be tested when people design it and manufacturing them. Our cars need, need to be te tested. Even myself is tested, I believe. Before, like, uh, be before I was born, some o OB should use the ultra scan to scan my mom and to make sure I'm okay, right? So everything is tested and uh, uh, testing is everywhere. So next uh, concept, a concept I'm going to talk about, one concept which, which is very important is design for testing. So when you design something, you, when you fix something, you have to think about how to test it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You, you are going to be in trouble. So for, if you open the PCB of your, of your smartphone, your TV, there should be some pads designed reserved for testing. So the probes can be, uh, or needles can be uh, contact and make sure it's, it's, it's working. And uh, personally, I used to build the test system for, like that was like 10 years ago, uh, back in China. I used to work, work for a company to integrate the test system for iPhone, for iPhone chipset. So pretty much 30% of the iPhone 4S the, the transceiver on the phone, the test station was built by me. So that's why the quality is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so uh, uh, to do that, you, you need to make sure that uh, you have a proper instrument and that you have a controller to talk to all the instruments. And uh, <clears throat> most importantly, uh, the one who designed the chipset, who designed the phone has to reserve the uh, um, the interface for your testing. Otherwise, you, you can't do it. So uh, when we talk about testing, what exactly what, what we are testing? Um, it can be anything. Uh, I just gave you some easy examples, like uh, uh, environment testing, moisture, temperature, wind speed, uh, something like that, or vibration testing, or even microphone testing, or uh, something like a voltage, current, power, imaging. So it can be anything. So that's why uh, like, uh, I brought so many uh, in instruments here. It's just like a general purpose instruments. My son always asks me, dad, what does this do? I can't answer because it can be, a it can be used for anything. Like yeah. <laughs> Um, I remember I went to a University of Sydney uh, like uh, uh, last month, the my, my Brain and Mind Center in Canberra Town, I think. So they have uh, like uh, so many strange instruments I've never seen. Uh, they have more than 10 different instruments. 
uh, to observe and uh, analyze the behavior of mice. So uh, there are so many different instruments you can't imagine. So I, I can't go through everything with you, but I just gave you some like a general purpose one, electronic ones, and uh, maybe thermal, uh, thermal imaging ones. And uh, we talk about that each, uh, one by one. Um, and uh, how does the instrument work? So this is a typical instrument block diagram. Normally you have to have some sensor uh, in, in the front. It can be a antenna. It can be a uh, uh, like a transducer or accelerometers, microphone. It can be anything. And we have the signal conditioning circuits, data acquisition circuits. And then we, we convert the analog signal to a digital signal. That's what we call the ADC. And uh, either it's in our computer or in the instrument, it, it's going to do the calculation and uh, like an average FFT, whatever needs to be done. And, the, and they gave you the presentation. Either it's going to give you a spectrum, a waveform, or a save to the file or whatever. So that's how an instrument normally works. And uh, we can start with some easy ones. What is this? Multimeter. Ah, good. So uh, this is the digital multimeter. It can do pretty much everything for your DIY, DIY job. This is my, uh, my colleague, Leon. Um, so uh, um, basically it, it does like a voltage, DC voltage, AC voltage, uh, DC current or AC current and, uh, and the diameter. And some of them can do the frequency uh, measurement if you want to measure the frequency. And uh, some of them can do the LCR, like capacitance, uh, like uh, resistance. Um, so, so what is this? This one. It's, it's also a multimeter. So what's the difference between them? <laughs> yeah, price is uh, yeah. Um, actually, I can tell you this one, this specific one, this is because it's bloody keysite, it's more expensive than this. Yeah, yeah, this is like a 2000 or something because it's keysite. Um, and uh, this is the sequence. Um, so several things, uh, several different differentiators between them. Uh, the first one is uh, we, we talk about the accuracy. Accuracy, we, we, we talk about uh, DMM, we always talk about three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. What does that mean? It, it means the, uh, the digit, the number it, it can give you. Like this is like a three and a half, it gave you four digit. And the one digit is half digit. It, can, it, can, it cannot go to nine, so it's like a one to five. So it's like a half digit. And this is five and a half. So it has much better accuracy. Um, and uh, normally the, the handheld uh, DMM can only go up to five and a half. That's the, pretty much the top uh, handheld DMM. But for the bench top one, it can go all the way up to seven and a half. Uh, but the, the most common one will be four and a half, five, four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. Um, and also, uh, when we talk about the difference, uh, yes, it does the, uh, the like uh, current voltage, DC continuity, everything. Uh, but this one obviously have more capability. For example, uh, resistance. Do you know like a four wire resistance? Yeah, so this one can do four wire resistance. And this one can do the summer couple as well. And uh, it can do the uh, thermal resistor as well. And uh, if you plug in a switch card from the back, it can do the multi-channel uh, scanning as well. So if you have a, like a multi-channel one, if you have a circuit board, you want to test it, this, 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 at the same time, it can do the uh, scanning. You don't have to do it by, your, by using your probe. And also this one can, can be connected to your laptop and your computer. So you can use a program to program that. Uh, you can do this first and then that first, which is very, very important. I'm going to touch it in the second. Um, so uh, yeah, 
that's is that's pretty much uh, digital multimeter. It's very easy. And uh, what's that? Oscilloscope. Have you used an oscilloscope before? Oh, good. So if you never used an oscilloscope before, I can teach you how to use it in two seconds. Like this is my finger. And uh, you have to find some, some button on here. Uh, normally it's a, it's a different color. It's called auto setup or auto scale. Um, so press that. Normally it gives you the right answer. Uh, it's like a auto focus on the, on the cameras. Uh, for the, for the uh, experts, uh, normally you, you use the horizontal knobs and uh, vertical knobs to, to, uh, to manipulate, to fine tune your, your timing level or your, your voltage level. Uh, but 95% is sufficient. So that's why in, in University of Sydney, in UNSW, when we sell oscilloscope to their labs, the teacher asked us to uh, manually disable that. Otherwise the student will uh, take their shot, shot cut. <laughs> so uh, I, I used to uh, sell like a 200 uh, oscilloscope to a UNSW and uh, it took me the whole day in the lab to disable that one by one. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but normally it gave you the right answer. For example, I'm testing something. Uh, I'm testing something. This is the test signal. Uh, but I'm not happy. I'm, I don't know, maybe I, I've done something wrong. I just pressed the button and it's going to give me the right answer. And also it gave, it gave you different form factor like uh, this is the bench top one. Uh, I can't remember, it's like uh, 2000 bucks. Um, and uh, is, uh, this one is 300. It's kind of the old one in our demo. Uh, and the one down, down here, oh, I didn't get it out from my, where is it? Don't know where is it. Oh, this one. Can everyone empty your pockets? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one is like a 100, a 100 megahertz bandwidth. So this is like a 600 bucks. So it's quite, quite good entry level. And this is, this is the one which uh, battery inside and uh, touch all touch screens and some of the buttons and the knobs is the new Mixic ones. And it, run Windows? Uh, it runs Android. <laughs> <laughs> Have you run it yeah, uh, it doesn't have the battery, so I have to charge it. Yeah, so, uh, And uh, so normally when we talk about oscilloscope, we have uh, several uh, parameters we talk about. One is definitely the bandwidth. And also we talk about the sampling rate. You can see this one is two giga sample per second. And the entry one is one giga sample per second. Um, I remember like uh, last month, some customer called me. Hey Chi, uh, I got your oscilloscope, I got your DMM. Your DMM seems there is something wrong in your in your oscilloscope. I say what's wrong? So he said, when I use the oscilloscope to test my power supply, and I use DMM to test the same power supply, it gave me a different number. I said uh, okay. So uh, he said this is. Uh, I set the power supply to five, and the DMM gave me five exactly five, and oscilloscope gave me like a five point zero two, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, okay, uh, do, you know the, do you know the resolution of the oscilloscope? It's eight bit. Eight bits is uh, the resolution is like, a, oh my God. yeah, 256, uh, yeah. So uh, why we need an oscilloscope? Because we want to see the timing information. So that's why the bandwidth, the input bandwidth is, is very important, that, that means how, how, what kind of uh, signal you can take in. And uh, the sampling rate is like, like the sampling rates, like what kind of uh, the, uh, the, time, the timing resolution you will get for your, for your minimum resolution here. Um, okay, so that's pretty much about oscilloscope. Um, yeah, that's, that's the 
auto setup. That's the one you, you should find. Uh, you sh if you can't find the one, just uh, throw that away. That's not a super slow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't buy any too many ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, I think we, we talk about a little bit about the resolution accuracy, something like that, which is always confusing to most of the people. So uh, I just want to spend like uh, two minutes to talk about the resolution, accuracy, precision, what does that mean? And uh, why we need to uh, uh, look at that. So resolution is the minimum you can see, but it doesn't mean it's accurate. It's just a, the minimum number you can see. And uh, the accuracy is the absolute accuracy you can see. And the precision, th this one gave you a pretty good one. This is accurate. But this is the precision, it's, uh, but it's not accurate enough. This is the accurate and the precision, precise, and this is the this is a piece of shit. <laughs> so, so uh, from, from, the, uh, from the accuracy perspective, a digital multimeter is more accurate than an oscilloscope, that's, that's for sure. But, but from the timing information, uh, oscilloscope give you more information about the timing, about the dynamic range. Uh, so that's, that's something uh, you need to focus. Um, and the next one is power supply. So power supply is uh, is very important instrument with, when we do the test and measurement. Uh, so it can be quite cheap. This is power supply. It's a it's an iPhone charger, but it's the power supply. And this is the laptop charger. It's a power supply. And this is also a power supply. It's benchtop power supply, like this, like this, and. Uh, this is too heavy, I can't carry them. It's like a one, one kilowatt uh, blade power supply, one U. So what's the difference between them? The two on the left are RFI generators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, there are several differences. Like uh, uh, the first one is power. This is maybe 20 watts or five watts, yeah. something like that. This is uh, 65 watts. Uh, this is like a 300. And this is why like a, one one k or two k, yes, yeah. And uh, from what from voltage, this from power perspective, from voltage perspective, this is like only five watts, and this can be like a twelve watts. They can be seven, uh, 70, 70. This can be like a 300, 500, whatever. Uh, same thing for the current. This one has much much better current. Uh, and from noise perspective, because this is the charger, so it doesn't care about noise. So it can be like a switch. Yeah, it, it can be like a normal switch uh, power supply. But this is like, a, you have to have like a filter and uh, all, the, all the circuits to remove the noise because it's instrument level stuff. And uh, most importantly, those instruments can be calibrated. I think we talk about the calibration uh, during the during the pizza time. So uh, uh, you can't calibrate this, but you can calibrate this. So what what is calibration? Have any, any idea about calibration? Exactly as long as it <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's that, that's the thing. So uh, we have a, like a several different kind of calibration. You, uh, if you think your 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 product is uh, is doing something wrong, is uh, is way off the, uh, the specification, bring it back to the factory, do the calibration. But it doesn't mean is accurate because we use my I use my equipment to calibrate that. Um, so if you want to do a proper calibration, you have to make sure it's calibrated with the reference. So who keeps the reference? Yes, so in, in Australia is NMI in uh, Linfield or uh, Port Melbourne. Uh, so uh, they keep the reference. So that's the reference from the standard organization and uh, the standard organization NMI will distribute their reference to all the not accredited labs like a TR calibration or metrics. Now they, they call themselves like a press call or something. So uh, they distribute it to the 
like accredited labs. So they can like uh, synchronize with each other. And when we send our equipment to the calibrating lab, they, they will use their standard to calibrate whatever is like a, uh, is the voltage or its current the temperature. So yeah, that's, that's the calibration. And it's very expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some sometimes it's more more than the instrument. Um, and uh, the last uh, session, so uh, radio frequency. So all those are the radio frequency related equipment. I think you maybe you use some of them before. Like this is the VNA uh, signal generator, spectral analyzer. Um, small VNA, this is the big four part VNA. Um, and the spectral analyzer. So what does the spectral analyzer do? do? <laughs> yeah. So why we don't use a, my question is why we don't use a, just use oscilloscope? Because you've got signals of multiple frequencies. It's very hard to say. It's frequency domain, it's time domain. Uh, yeah, so why we need a, a Frequency domain. Time domain is good for me. <laughs> so uh, I just I can just give you an example. So uh, for example, this is a spectral analyzer for three and three point two gigahertz. If you want to find a uh, oscilloscope which can see three point two gigahertz, it's going to be like more than ten thousand dollars, and only very specific brand has that kind of oscilloscope. Uh, like a Keysight or Jordan Schwartz, they have the really high end oscilloscope to see really high frequency, maybe up to 40 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz. And you still can't get the picture on. Uh, you can do the calculation using yeah. the, yeah, you can do the calc. I, I know that CASA system has got a, like a 40 gigahertz oscilloscope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got one, one, yeah. one yeah. Yeah, one Keysight one. That, that one is like a 300,000, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> But if you, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but if you if you do it in the frequency domain, it's much cheaper and uh, it's easy. So, how we do that? Uh, maybe Philip, you can explain that in the in the following lecture. Uh, so, talking about like uh, uh, up conversion, down conversion stuff. So basically we, we use one of the, because we are talking about frequency signals. So we use a one of the signal as a local oscillator and use the mixer and use the fi uh, filters, the blah, 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 to move your frequency from very high frequency down to a low frequency. That's what we call intermediate fre frequency. And uh, that one, we can use the, uh, the normal uh, oscilloscope or ADC to, uh, to do the data acquisition and do the calculation, then we can retrieve the frequency information here without losing the, the message. And uh, uh, so we're talking about the frequency analyzer, uh, most important parameter will be the frequency range. Uh, normally it will be from 9K to something like 1.5, 3.2, 5, 7.5, 200, uh, 26.5 gigahertz, all the way up to 50 gigahertz. And the upper to uh, like a more than 50 gigahertz, we will need uh, like a, something extra to boost up the, the frequency. That's another story. Um, but most of the uh, application, we, we, we use uh, like a, up to 50 gigahertz spectral analyzer. And uh, some, sometime we use a real-time spectral analyzer, which is the, I think Philip got one. Yeah, a real-time spectral analyzer. And the, dif the difference can be another topic. Uh, I have a YouTube video to explain the, what's going on between the uh, normal spectral analyzer uh, and the real-time spectral analyzer. So basically that one do the real-time calculation, which you can detect the small burst without losing the information. Yeah. If, you, if you have like a normal burst uh, on, the, uh, on the spectral analyzer, because for the normal spectral analyzer it's worth sweeping. So uh, it's easy to lose your, your burst. So that's uh, time domain uh, versus uh, frequency domain. I think you guys are pretty uh, uh, familiar with that. And the uh, signal generator. So a signal generator, 
I don't think I bring any bench top one, but this, this is kind of a combination of a signal generator and the spatial analyzer. Um, and um, uh, signal generator, RF signal generator, uh, there are two types of different RF uh, signal generator. One is analog, it just uh, generates a sine wave. And uh, sometimes we call it analog generator, or sometimes we call it a CW generator, it's the same thing. Um, so basically, it only does this uh, like a sine wave. And uh, sometimes they, they have ability to do the, the pulse modulation to generate the pulse together with the signal. And uh, sometimes it gave you some e a simple modulation like a FM or AM or OK modulation. So, uh, so it's pretty straightforward. And this is a vector signal generator. Um, like this one can be used uh, as a vector signal generator. Uh, vector means uh, you can pretty much generate anything. So you can gen, gen if you have a Wi-Fi standard, you can gener generate a Wi-Fi signal. You can generate an FM radio signal. You can generate LTE signal. It can be anything. So that's the one we use to, to test the iPhone. So uh, uh, basically uh, generate and receive signals. Okay. And uh, I think we talk about uh, most of the generic electronic instrument already. Uh, there are some more like a, a VNA uh, or maybe uh, uh, some of the voltmeter and the nano ohm meter, something special. Uh, if you are interested, I, I can come back and talk about them. Um, and, uh, and the last thing I want to uh, talk about a little bit about is the programming. So why we need a programming? For example, I want to test my phone. So Apple produced like more than 20, 20 million or 40 million phone every year. So the testing has to be really quick. Automated. Yeah, automated. So you have to talk to all the instruments uh, to, for example, I, I can give you a really simple uh, example. I have to boot up my phone using the power supply, give the power to this. And I have to tell the, uh, the 